Please stand clear of the doors. Hey, guys, are on the monorail. Going to... What is that thing? What character? What is that? What it's character like is that? It's like some wombat wearing a sailor outfit. Isn't that Winnie the Pooh's stepdad? You mean Mr. Pooh? Talking about Sailor Bear? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to episode 116 of the Diz His Podcast. I'm Joe. I'm Alex. I'm Chris. And today we will be giving the his on Duffy and Friends. Jen is not with us today. Today is her husband's birthday, so she's not going to be on the show today. So we have Chris from the No New Friends Podcast. Hey, Chris, how you doing? Hey, glad to be back, man. Third time's a charm, right? Yeah, you were, you, you, this is your third time? It's my third time. What, the one that, which, do you remember which episode you did? We did uh, the, the Duck Ride. Yeah, we did the uh, <laughs> we did the we did another boat ride. Now I'm breaking the, oh. the tradition of boat rides. We're doing a character. Yeah, we're doing uh, Duffy, huh? And yes. many of you might not know who Duffy is. Like Alex, Alex had no idea who no Duffy idea. was. Right no, no. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and do Duffy because I know Duffy is like huge over like you know China. So and I've seen him before over. He's not huge in China. No. <laughs> is he in japan yes. All right, there you go but there's no he's big in china too yes you're correct he's big in china too he's always big overseas right uh but before we kind of jump into duffy and talk about duffy and his friends yes uh, chris tell us where can we find you man like what, what tell us a little bit about your show my address oh my no no so... no not your address okay we don't know your address i i, I trust for that you, you so... can tell us off <laughs> off air all right address. sounds good just yeah. from the patreon yeah. so you can find me on the no new friends podcast you could uh find us on all streaming platforms you could find us on uh youtube as well but just look us up on all streaming platforms it's easier that way so you don't have to see my face yeah yeah <laughs> and your show is pretty much about adult things about everyday life I would yep, say, yeah, you know. yeah. We do talk about the theme parks because uh, two of the hosts, Mary and Scott, live in uh, right outside Orlando. So we do throw in some theme park talk. But yeah, mostly it's just uh, laughing at our everyday occurrences being adults. Yeah. And obviously, you know, for you who are kind of listening right now, we, mm-hmm. we have some Patreons on Zoom and Chris, we're, we're on Zoom kind of recording. And Chris is in a bathtub. I am. With yeah, Duffy. <laughs> with Duffy, but it's really Ted, right? But yeah, you're in. A, it actually looks like you're in there with him. I know it, it does because I am. <laughs> You got like a little Bert and Ernie thing going on. Yeah, I, I shower with my shirt on usually. So. Do you really? Yes, I do actually. So you're, you're kind of like what's that one show, Arrested Development, where the guy, he's in yeah. uh, a no nude or whatever like that. Yes. That oh yeah, name? yeah. Non nude. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Kind of like that. Okay. Yep. Hey Chris, this- now you have all this experience doing podcasting. Maybe we'll have a good episode <laughs> versus the other episode you're on. <laughs> But yeah, that's so I said, third time's a charm. Yeah. Oh, and, and, and you know, you said the duck ride. It's the Grand Fiesta Tour. Yes. Right? Yes. And we also did Navi River Journey. Was Smurf the other one. ride, yes. Yeah. And uh, you, you've you been on, you don't even been on one of them, right? You know, you've been on both. No, of them. I've been on both. Yeah, I've been on yeah. both. So yeah. today we're going to talk about Duffy. So let's get to it, right? Duffy. Duffy's a bear. What? Alex, you I have did the wrong a... research. Oh, gosh. What is it? What'd you do to research on a hippo? <laughs> Yeah. Duffy the Hippo? Duffy World the War II hippo. veteran Duffy from England. Oh, gosh. <laughs> this is going to be a weird show. <laughs> so I, uh, you, you really don't see a lot of merchandise that kind of, that has Duffy. If by right? a lot you mean none at all, then yes. You are Here, I've, seen, I've seen some. Here in America, yes. Not so much. Yeah. Steve's in chat saying he did the research. Oh, Alex did the research on Duff the Beer. Yeah, this is not a universal podcast. <laughs> if it was a universal podcast, Steve, one of our patrons, you'll just leave. What do you mean Universal. <laughs> The Simpsons are on Disney Plus. That's true. Oh, that is true. That's true. true. But the, Simps- territory. the Simpsons is over at Universe Studios. Yes, though. you're right. I mean, that the ride and the characters over at Universe Studios, kind of like the Marvel characters. Um, but I think Duffy's kind of a cool character. I know they were pushing hard because it's big overseas, right? It's not very big here in America. Mm. I know that they were pushing hard to kind of get people to like Duffy over here, but it didn't really work out. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple of times I actually have seen Duffy out in the parks, like meet and greets mm-hmm. over at Epcot. Um, have you guys seen him out there? Kind of for like meet and greets? Yes. No. No, you haven't seen him. But Chris, you, you don't live. I've been here, to Epcot right? like three times. So yeah. yeah. So I'll be very he's, low. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> very rare to see him out there. Uh, I didn't know very many. Like, I didn't know he had friends. I had no idea he had friends. But yeah, I but thought he was just I a would, lonely bear. <laughs> but, I, you know, I love bears. Yeah. If you listen to some previous episodes, I love bears. Yes, we you know? do know you love bears. 
Yeah, so it's kind of cool. I didn't know that Duffy had friends. I when I was doing the research for Duffy, and I was uh, like, I would search Duffy to make the promos for like our social media. He he has like a bunch of friends. He yeah. does. Yeah, so I'm kind of interested to hear the history on Duffy. Alex and I were talking maybe like a week ago, and he said that the history is very interesting. I mean, not to toot my own horn, but. I mean, good. not. I'm not. I mean, you're saying the history is interesting, not that you did the history. Yeah, the history. you're not very interesting. <laughs> yeah, you know, you stop making uh, your face. Yeah, so, you guys want to give it a rating? Is Duffy the character? Yes, I would love to give it a rating. How do, how do we give it a rate? How we how we rated other characters? Well, why you have it in our notes? It's just always there. I just copy and paste previous shows and change well, I, the number. I'm just saying, have we rated characters in the past? Did we rate Mickey? Did we I have rate? No idea. We have to go back I don't, and listen. I don't think we I'm did. gonna rate it a five. Whoa. Okay. This is not a main character. I rarely Whoa. ever see it in the parks. This is me, my lowest rating. Probably that's because you haven't been in Asia. Just because you're not a worldly traveler, why you gotta take that on Duffy? Because shame you, a- sir. You're a five. This is this is my personal <laughs> rating. This is my personal <laughs> rating. Don't go ahead and get on my rating. Yeah, you know, Alex. What's your rating, Alex? Yeah, what's your I rating? Let's, let's I give it. I give it a bit. three. Uh, <laughs> are you for real? I don't know how to rate him. I yeah, I give him like a three. The first when I saw him, I was like, who's that? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and give Duffy a uh, three point seven. Okay, so 3.7. all our Asian listeners yeah. turn this podcast off. Yes, because our yeah, terrible scores. You might, you might they've been leave. duped. Honestly, they've been duped. Why? And uh, and I because listen, we'll get more into the history, and then I'll go on my <laughs> Duffy rant because I don't want to talk about anything that Alex may talk about. But I have a huge, huge problem with this corporation that we call Disney over Duffy. Let's continue. Let's get to the his on Duffy and Friends. Duffy and Friends is a fan favorite character in Asia. Duffy the Bear had a lonely beginning but has come a long way since its origin back in 2002 when he was simply known as the Disney Bear. This bear was marketed as Once Upon a Store at Disney Springs in Walt Disney World. Due to bad sales, the Disney Bear ended production until Oriental Land Company brought Duffy to life. Now Duffy is the face of Disney Sea in Japan and has five friends who can be seen at multiple parks. Shelly May, Gelatoni, Stella Lou, Cookie Ann, and Olu Mel. Shelly May, isn't that the, the loan company for like college loans? Uh, no, it's Sally. <laughs> is that like oh, Sally, Sally May? Sally, Sally May. May, my bad. Okay. And you got Gelatoni. So do you, do you go into how these people get their names? Um, <clears throat> yeah. Okay, dumbest thing ever. Just want to just want to uh, <laughs> well, lead up to it, guys. Uh, we have Trigger answers warning. for two of them, how they get their name and then a third one, how he gets an additional part of his name. OK, so I'll wait to bash them until you talk about it. Yeah, sure. So hold on one second. I'm going to take a guess of how they got their names because okay. they're different, like, uh, oh, please. Different areas where the bears are kind of located at. Right. Sure. Kind of. Am I right. Kind of. Kind of like gelatoni is probably like Italy. Kind of. Okay. Get, I don't know. All that's, trying to go ahead that's, and make a, money. <laughs> that's a stretch. I can tell you my favorite's Cookie Ann. Oh yeah, yeah. You love you love dogs. I, well, I love cookies. Oh okay. Uh, well, yeah. she's known for her waffles. Oh really? And it's true. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's talk about. Uh, and then we got what's the last one, Alex? You kind of you you've done the research. I, I don't want to mess Olu up the Mel? name. Yeah, I'm taking that guess. That's like Hawaii, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Disney's just trying to go ahead and uh, get people to travel and collect. Bears or the just Duffy like Pokemon, you gotta collect them all. Well, no, Joe, you've actually you've you've nailed it on the head. And um, I did a little bit of research myself because I'm a veteran fill-in podcast host, yep. so I did some research on Duffy the Bear. And uh, the Disney Bear failed miserably. The Disney Bear, Disney relied on kids reading. What a concept! Kids reading to market their products. So they put out this Disney Bear, and they put a little book stapled to his ear, and expected people to read this book about the Disney Bear. And of course, no one reads. So never took off, right? So then um, when they put, when they rebranded the Disney Bear as Duffy, they, he was a big hit over in um, Japan. And then Alex, did you go on to say, do you go on to say in the history about what happens when he went to Orlando? Uh, uh, yeah, I think, I mean, we'll get into the first history. The bear's cute. It's a cute bear. Sure, but so is like every Disney character besides Oogie Boogie. Yeah, sure too. 
Yeah. Like every every Disney character is cute. The fact that they wanted to come up with a bear for kids to to hold around uh, to take adventures around Disney World was the weirdest concept, considering that every single Disney character is marketable. And they wanted to just create a random bear out of nowhere and expect it to take off. I thought it was you'll, really, you'll, really weird marketing. You'll thing. see. You'll see. In 2002, Disney opened up a new store at then downtown Disney, now Disney Springs. Disney teamed up with Hasbro to create a Toy Story heavily decked out in Toy Story memorabilia. Its 16,000 square foot store sold a wide variety of merchandise. One of the merchandise that was designed, especially for the store, was the Disney Bear. This stuffed bear was designed for Disney to break into the stuffed bear market, a market that supports bear conventions every year all over the world. The Disney Bear was a very generic looking stuffed bear with Mickey silhouettes for foot pads. It was released in a wide range of colors, honey gold, caramel, chocolate, black, white, gray, lavender, purple, blue, green, pink, and valentine red. The bear came with a little book that told his story. Mickey had a stuffed bear that he brought with him to Disney. Mickey wished his bear could become real so he can go on adventures. Tinkerbell overheard this wish and sprinkled the bear with fairy dust and brought the bear to life. Mickey and his bear went on adventures all over Disney. After a year, Disney decided in production of the Disney bear due to low sales. A few years later, the Oriental Land Company, owners of Tokyo Disneyland and Tokyo Disney Sea, saw this idea and decided to bring it over to Tokyo since stuffed bears were well loved in Japanese culture. They redesigned the bear and gave it a new origin story, giving him the name Duffy. The new story has Minnie handcrafting the bear as a gift symbolizing her love for Mickey before he goes on a boating adventure. This is why Duffy is known as the bear of happiness and luck. Mickey sleeps with the bear every night, and one night he dreams that he and his bear, named Duffy, would go on wild adventures together all over the world. When Mickey wakes up, Duffy is real and wearing a sailor outfit. They go to multiple countries, capturing their adventures with selfies. Mickey got back home and told all his buddies about his adventures with Duffy. Goofy, Donald, and Daisy all wanted their own Duffies, so many started to make more, so many more, that they now are sold at Tokyo Disneyland and Disney Sea. So did you guys pretty much know that the Oriental Land Company, they're the owners of Tokyo Disneyland and Tokyo Disney Sea? Disney doesn't own those. Yeah, yeah, I knew that. Oh. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah. I mean, Disney obviously plays a part in it, like a huge part in it, but um, they're not, I think they have it like leased out for like a crazy amount of years. Oh, wow. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. Who has it leased out? Uh, I'm not sure how it works, really, to tell you the truth. That's that's something else to kind of, that can be a whole other episode. It's kind of like the deals of Disney, we can call it, you know, like the history of the deals of Disney, because there's a lot of that would other be things. Yeah, because I mean, Castaway K, I know we kind of did an episode on Castaway K, mm-hmm. and Disney doesn't own that island. You know, we talked about it in that episode, and Disney doesn't own these parks either. So, um, wow. And we're kind of interested to see, like, you know, like if let's say they have a deal for like 100 years, what's going to happen? Like, they don't, what happens if they don't continue the deal? What's yeah. going to happen? That'd be what do they do? Very there? interesting. That's what I'm, take like, I'm just saying. Do they have to strip down all the Disney information stuff? Well, that's kind of what they we like kind of hold them at ransom at that point. Like you need to pay us to continue. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they'd be done. A couple things about this history though. So first of all, we're all pretty good friends. Um, what? What, if, what if, what if I was like, what if I, so we, we all game together. What if one day I was like, you know what? Um, guys, I really wish I had an inanimate bear to game with. I, 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 I could really use a, uh, someone to game with. Like, that's what this reminds me of. Like Mickey has all these great friends, but that, but then he, he wants a bear instead. How, how would you feel if you were goofy or his wife? Yeah. He's Think like, about it. he's like, I'm going to go on a boating trip and bring the, the boys <laughs> AKA Duffy to have ventures with <laughs> D- Duffy. That's how sick of Minnie he is. He had to he had to uh, bring a bear along to travel the world with him. Also, do you guys know how Duffy got his name? No. This is just this is just the domino first domino in the line of dominoes that Disney uh, with dumb names for the, all these characters. How they got their names? Alex, do you know how he got his name? I didn't see that anywhere. Yeah, he was given to him in a duffel bag, so he called him Duffy. Oh, oh yeah, wow. you know what? I did see that somewhere yeah. and i forgot to remember it when i was writing the history this was the laziest marketing <laughs> ever by disney and as we go on in the history it's, it's not just disney more it's oriental trading company uh well maybe they just, well this was this duffy in my opinion after doing all this research and hearing this duffy was an accident on purpose <laughs> i like duffy though <laughs> you gave him a four out of ten <laughs> you yeah gave him a five compared- well, because I compared him to the other, I gave him a five out of ten. That's true, okay. But I also compared him to the other Disney characters. 
Well, you have to. He's a yeah, Disney I know. character. Well, he's an Oriental Land Company character. <laughs> Plus, I don't see enough of him. If I was, if I was seeing cartoons of him, you know, if I was, if I was seeing him out in the parks more, I'm not gonna lie to you. When I saw Duff, I wanted to go see him, but I was too busy, you know, eating and drinking around the world over at Food and Wine. Yeah, yeah he's just not not appealing enough. He's just a creepy bear in a sailor outfit. The Japanese kawaii culture gravitates toward cuteness. Minnie is the queen of the kawaii for Disney, so her handcrafting this bear made it a very special product that everyone wanted to own. The Oriental Trading Company pushed merchandise for Duffy, releasing different merchandise with Duffy on it, as well as merchandise for your Duffy to wear. It became common practice for men and women to carry around their Duffy bears while having their adventures at Disney, making sure to take many selfies with their bears. Some people would even pose the bears around the park and take photos. In 2005, Duffy became such a hit they decided to make him a star of a stage show. Duffy, Mickey, and Minnie starred in My Friend Duffy, a show at Cape Cod took off theater. Cape Cod is a New York and New England themed town residing in the land called American Waterfront at Tokyo Disney Sea. The stage show retold the story of how Duffy became a real bear, and with a costume, meet and greets were now available. Duffy became a hit and even rivaled Mickey for the most beloved Disney character. The Cape Cod area transformed into Duffy's home. With Duffy becoming such a hit, he was optioned for other parks through the One Disney Theme Park Corporate Initiative, which allowed IP and ideas to be shared through the different parks. In October 2010, Duffy came back to America and was released at Epcot, with exclusive clothes being sold at all the pavilions. The clothes reflected the culture of the pavilion that they were sold in. In November of 2010, Duffy was also released at Hong Kong Resort, and in 2012, he appeared in Disneyland Paris. So I feel like I can't believe he came back here. Why? Because Disney, I feel like he, he wasn't making Disney money over here. But I guess maybe he was making Disney. Like, you know, he shut down Disney Quest because it wasn't making enough. It was, Disney Quest was making money, but wasn't making Disney money. Right. There's no way does, Duff, Duffy was making Disney money. But Duffy doesn't pay. Like, does, they don't have to pay rent for Duffy. That's true. But they have to make the stuff. That is true. I, I also do think that um, Duffy is, I think just hearing the story about him, what other Disney character, you know, wasn't real, went to sea, became a real boy. Is Duffy not Pinocchio? <laughs> so that Geppetto make, wanted a friend. So that makes Mickey Geppetto. Yeah. Geppetto wanted a friend, turned his puppet into a, into a living thing. Yeah, I guess. That could be an interesting movie. Duffy? They yeah. made it. It's called Pinocchio. <laughs> no, but they should make it. <laughs> Tom Hanks is starring in it. <laughs> <laughs> America's dad? Yeah. I guess it's not stealing if it's your own company. They could make it a copy <laughs> completely <laughs> scene for scene. They're just duping us right in front of our eyes. And we're just buying it up. Who? Traveling. It's not we. Up. We're not buying it up. It's true. We're smarter than that. It's I Tokyo C. Def- I definitely think, though, Duffy has very... It's very interesting history. Oh, uh, yeah. I think so, too. I think it's kind of cool how... I, I mean, it's cool that they share IPs and information, and they're like, hey, he's doing well in Asia. Let's put him back in America's market and see what happens. Yeah, I kind of like what's going to... The next piece of history that I kind of talk about, Duffy, I'm not going to get too much into it, obviously, because you're about to read it, right? Mm-hmm. But the the next part is what I find really interesting, and this is where... Is this... You know, Disney knows how to make money and mm-hmm. you're going to you're going to hear about it right now. <laughs> this is where this is where it gets disgusting. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> Why? We'll talk about it. We'll talk yeah, we'll talk about it. Yeah. Money, money, money. Disney quickly noticed that Japanese guests were traveling to different parks more routinely to purchase exclusive clothes that were sold there and to, of course, go on adventures with their Duffy bears. With the popularity of Duffy reaching international levels, it was time for Disney to cash in. So in 2013, at the Disney Dreamers Everywhere event at Tokyo Disney Sea, they debuted Shelly May, a female bear. Shelly May came with a little book that told her backstory. Duffy the bear was lonely, wishing he had a friend. He wrote a note in a bottle and put it in the sea. Minnie found this bottle and read the note. She then made a friend for Duffy, a cute girl bear. Duffy presented a shell to the bear as a token of his friendship, so Minnie named her Shelly May. Shelly May took off and by 2014, She received a role in the My Friend Duffy stage show. The Oriental Land Company decided they needed to make more friends for Duffy to promote different lands at the park. They then created a gray kitten with a blue beret named Gelatoni. Gelatoni saw Duffy spill his gelato, and to cheer him up, he used his tail and the spilled gelato to paint a Mickey picture. 
for Duffy. Duffy liked it so much, he decided to become friends with the kitten and named him Gelatoni. Gelatoni became the ambassador of the Mediterranean Harbor. The Gelatoni costume debuted in 2016 as part of the Come Join Our Friends show in Disney Sea. In 2017, the Oriental Land Company released Stella Lou, a gray bunny in a turquoise tutu. Stella Lou was practicing her dancing in Cape Cod, and Duffy noticed. She told Duffy how she dreamed of being a ballerina, which Duffy didn't understand because he thought dreams were something you have while asleep. She explained what she meant to him, and they became great friends. So, Chris is saying Duffy's terrible. Steve is saying Duffy's terrible. Well, I think this is a good move. I think this was smart for them to do. I'll explain. Go ahead. I'll explain. First of all, who named these people? A five-year-old? You ever give some? You ever? Okay. So, like my cousin, <laughs> my cousin, I give her a, I give her a like a a bird, you know, stuffed animal. Oh, what did you name him? Birdie. Okay. So, so like, what, what was their marketing team? All right. So we got this, uh, we got this Italian guy, and he spills, uh, he spills gelati. What should we call him? I don't know, gelatoni. It's like, and then, and then, and then with the, uh, with the, with Shelly May. May, with the Shelly, Shelly May. All right, so so <laughs> Duffy's gonna present this this uh this bear with with shells, which we call him definitely Shelly. Like, come on, like that's how that that's how they're coming up with these names. And then who's the last one? Stella Lou. That's just a bad name. I don't know the explanation for that. <laughs> Not a surprise that the same marketing team came up with Stella Lou. Hey, but how genius was it to go ahead and put these outfits all around the world so people have to travel? <laughs> that's the disgusting part. That that look they they realized that once they released uh, exclusive Epic, Epcot exclusive outfits, the people were traveling from overseas to buy these outfits. It's crazy. Like, that is insane. It's like buy them online. Yeah, you would think, right? It would cost a little less than a plane ticket, even if someone's going to upcharge you on the on the corduroy pants you got for Duffy. Like, that's insane to me. Yeah. But then they came here. They got to meet Duffy. They they probably wanted to come to these parks anyways. Everyone wants to visit Disney World. So it just gave them a reason to do it. But the releasing of the other stuffed animals in different parks around the world mm -hmm. like literally like someone touched upon earlier they've literally put these pokemon in different places and they made guests spend thousands of dollars to pokemon go to the other parks <laughs> and catch these things and so they're, they're spending money to get there just to buy these exclusive things and meet them because apparently it's like very highly coveted to meet duffy and meet these these people that well, are just i hate to if, break it to them but, so so yeah. at our parks right we go there and we structure our day around what what rides we want to ride, right? Right. So in Japan, they structure the day around meet and greets. That's that's the thing you do at Disney. You do that's meet and crazy. greets. That's crazy. Rides are something you do between the meet and greets. Mm -hmm. it's, things are definitely a lot different there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. It's a different culture, you know? You just, you know, and, and Duffy oh. is the number one guy. And if you have a number one guy, you're going to make more. I'm sorry. Are you mad that Mickey... Oh, we have Mickey Mouse. Let's just make a girl mouse. <laughs> What? We have a mouse you're who right, wears pants right. and no shirts. Let's make a duck and doing. Megan wear right. shirts and no pants. It would it would be stupid for them not to do that. Right? I think it's I think it's genius in the in the worst way possible. Like but, I think I think that the make the, the fact they're making money on this is insane. But you gotta think about this. Oh, but hold on though. But Mickey, these characters are more popular over there than Mickey Goofy. It's yes. like this, that, that's our Mickey and Goofy and stuff yeah. over here. So they're doing the same thing to us over here. Yeah. No, but Mickey is Disney. So like Mickey but, is the is the is the Michael that's Jordan. Cause, that's because of Disney. They made him Disney. Yeah, and they made D Duffy Disney over there. No, Walt oh, Disney right. made Mickey. What do you so, no, that's what I'm saying is like like so they the fact that Disney was able to be able to come up with some dumb character that was more popular than Mickey is insane. Like how how is that even possible? It's it's insane. And you know, and look at Duffy. Duffy has Mickey Mouse ears imprinted on his face. Not his face. <laughs> Yeah, it's on his Mickey face. On his, yeah, I didn't notice that. Yeah, he's got a silhouette of Mickey on his face. Like he can't even escape Mickey. <laughs> he looks at a it's mirror. Right on like, his face. He looks at a mirror. And he's like, Mickey's always with me. <laughs> Everywhere I go, I see his face. Is it really? Are you sure? He, he, I know it's serious. I know it's on his paws. Yeah, it's everywhere. Oh my gosh, he does. <laughs> it's just that. It's, it oh my gosh, better. it is. I didn't yeah. even notice that. His That's face is a hidden Mickey. Wheel. His face is a hidden Mickey. Disney just knows how to shove Mickey Mouse in your subconscious. <laughs> did you know that Duffy's face is on Mickey? I did hear that, but I've never been close enough to Mickey to see They call it, it a hidden Duffy. A hidden Duffy. <laughs> <laughs> That's in the hidden Mickey uh, guidebook, right? Duffy and his three friends took Disney Sea over and became the icons of the park. 
Disney wanted to use a fan base of Duffy to get Japanese Disney fans to venture to other parks. So in 2018, Cookie debuted in Hong Kong Disneyland on Main Street. Cookie is a yellow dog who loves to bake. She was running one day carrying some waffles when she bumped into Duffy. Duffy was enjoying some cotton candy, but when they bumped into each other, his cotton candy got all over Cookie's waffles. Cookie decided to make a cotton candy and waffle sandwich, so Duffy and her became good friends. This delectable treat is only sold at Hong Kong Disneyland, along with other exclusive Cookie merchandise. That same year, Olu was introduced, a green turtle who loved to play the ukulele. He was an Alani exclusive character. He met Duffy while Duffy was sailing with Mickey. Duffy wanted to find the perfect gift to bring back to Shelley May. He heard some lovely ukulele music, and it brought him to Olu. Olu told Duffy he could sing with him, and together they could present a song of love to Shelley May. In 2020, Olu made his meet and greet premiere at Shanghai Disneyland. During the seasonal holidays, Duffy and his friends can be seen at multiple parks, wearing seasonal gear. At Disney Sea, there are two designated Duffy stores, Aunt Peg's in Cape Cod and McDuck's department store in American Waterfront. Their merchandise line has become the most popular purchase at Duck Yoon Disneyland and Disney Sea. Somewhere, there's a group of executives just dying laughing at the fact that this took off. Yeah. And you know what? It's only beginning. I, well, no. look at look at the business model of the dressing up of the of the uh, animal stuffed animals. Don't they have those new things? You guys would know better than I do. Don't they have those new uh, Disney characters? I guess since Duffy didn't take off here, maybe they're tr- experimenting with that. I saw it at the Disney store when I was there a couple months ago. Which new character are you talking about? It's like you can get any Disney character you want, but you buy clothing for them, and it's like their version of Build a Bear. Oh yeah, they've had that for a while, I think, right? Right, so but that's that's essentially what Duffy is. So I wonder oh, yeah. if that's what they're pivoting to here in the United States. That's what Disney does is that we have all these collectibles, pins. I love collecting pins, right? But it's the same concept, right? I would love, I wouldn't go to a park to get a pin, but I uh, would go love to go to Disneyland and see the pins that they have there. And I would love to go ahead and get pins that are specifically for Disneyland because I'm there. Or I would love to go to Disney Sea and see what kind of pins they got at Disney Sea, right? So just because I like pins, maybe some people like to collect uh, clothes and stuff like that. So do you cater your day around, like do you center it around uh, going to all the different pin locations? Or do you you go on rides and stuff? I mean, I would go on rides and stuff. But if I saw, if I'm on my way to a ride and I see a pin pin location, I'm going to go and check out the pins. Okay. Right? That's what I do at the parks. I don't go, specifically, I don't go to the park to look for pins. But I'll be walking around. And I'll see. I'll, I'll see a cast member, you know, with a pin, and I'll be like, "Oh, that's cool. It's trade," and they'll trade with me. I feel bad doing that. Why? They can't say no. But I mean, it's not because it's a job or anything. I know. That's why I feel bad. So, uh, so you, I mean, I just don't think you understand. <laughs> like, you go to you go to Tokyo Disney Sea, right? You walk around. Everyone's gonna have a Duffy Bear with them. Everyone's gonna have a different so, something on the Duffy Bear it's wearing that's gonna be different than everyone else. People make their own clothes. People buy clothes exclusively. <laughs> There's a stand at Disney Sea for you to set your bear, and then behind the bear is like a scenery, a Disney scenery to take a picture of the bear, as if he's sitting in front of like a Disney scenery. The people That's will crazy. stand these bears in areas to take a picture of them at the park. So instead of doing Instagram, and be like, "Oh, selfie me, selfie me." It's Duffy selfie, Duffy selfie, Shelly May selfie. Wow. So when I was on a Disney cruise, I'm not going to talk about the Disney cruise. You know, I love talking about cruises, right? You do. But there was a group of um, Japanese girls that are on the cruise, right? And they, it was on the Marvel cruise. And to see them kind of, they were so excited. Like they, we would always run into them online and they were like so giddy about meeting the, the characters. Yeah. They were so excited. I can see how this is like a thing in their culture, I guess you can say. Yeah. Yeah, it is like their number one thing they want to do over there is meet characters. Oh, don't doubt They were like freaking out. It, like whenever they see the character, you can see them. They were laughing and giggling, uh-huh. super excited. And guess what? You know, so even though that's not really how we are over here in America, it was definitely cool to see. Like to see fun. them so excited. Oh, my gosh. Every single time we saw them, it, it made it better for us. Right. We're like, yes, you know, they're in line with us. <laughs> this is going to be awesome. And they're like, they're so excited. It was like they were meeting, you know, like how we would think of like a, I don't know how people would think of like a superstar over here. That's, a, that's but Mickey how Mickey is they, a superstar. Yeah, you're Duffy right. Duffy is a superstar. You're right. But it's like, you know, when you see like a five-year-old kid who grows up and they meet Mickey for the first time. Yeah. That's how they were. 
but and they were like you know like 25 four times the age yeah yeah like 25 or <laughs> i think disney missed a huge opportunity with the disney cruises i think they should implement a rule moving forward that all the captains of their ship while even sailing have to be dressed as like fully in duffy uh the, duffy. the whole the, the costume <laughs> yeah. because of the they, sailor as the say, sailor yeah one of the newer ships maybe would be duffy themed it could be he could be like the main like an atrium it'll be a duffy and friendship everyone be like what's going on here like who's this like all the americans on that <laughs> i would go on it uh japanese disney goers will pay to go on it and it'll go from they japan would. to other places don't give disney any ideas oh they'll, they'll man that is it. a good idea because they were talking about opening up a cruise ship over over there like there china go. and japan and stuff like that there you go the, the video that i watched was comparing duffy to figment like just some you know that yeah. random yeah because he represents character. the park and figment represents epcot park right they put a um <laughs> we wrap our buses here with you know characters and stuff they literally have buses wrapped in fur over there quick fire quick facts let's go In 2005, Duffy was the boy's substitute toy given out at the Perfectly Princess Tea Party at the Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa. In 2019, Cookie expressed how she would like a double name like her friend, so she became known as Cookie Ann. Duffy made his video game debut in the Connect Disneyland Adventures game, where he is an unlockable meet and greet character. Sorry. Hey, what? Why? Why, why is so dumb? Why is Cookie Ann need two names for? Her? Because she wants to be like her friends. This is, it's the five-year-old again. I want two names for this one. <laughs> they have two names. I want two names. In 2014, a promotional bus went on a trip across Japan, a fur-covered Duffy bus with matching fur seats. Duffy and Shelly May were looking for Alu, and they heard his lovely melody. Shelly May decided to call him Mel because of his music. But Duffy liked Alu, so he took on the name Alu Mel. Now, now they all have two names except for Duffy. Duffy needs a second name now. Oh. Duffy Bear. Duffy Bear. Yeah, there you go. We hear Diz His don't know too much about Duffy and friends, but he and his pals have brought much happiness worldwide. Who could have guessed a generic bear that didn't sell at Disney World could be transformed into Duffy the Bear? Surpassing Mickey as a top dog in Tokyo Disneyland and Tokyo Disney Sea. Ever roll out of bed and feel like being a little bad? Three Cheeky Chicks Wax Company has you covered with their Villain Wax Melt line. The Sea Hag Melt will have you wanting to use that body language like Ursula with its bouquet of roses, lily, lilacs, and sweet violets with undernotes of musk. If you feel like you're going to have a meltdown like Hades, throw in the Wax Melt Ruler of the Underworld, which will fill your home with smells of lavender, rosemary, lemon verbena, cinnamon, coriander, leather, amber, and hints of smoke. Or, if you just feel like you are just the evilest one of all, get yourself the Mistress of Evil Melt. These Maleficent-inspired melts will release a woodsy scent with its crisp pine needles, white fir, clove, patchouli, oak, and sugar pine. No matter how you're feeling, make sure to visit MagicallyScented.com to purchase a wide range of wax melts, candles, and room sprays, all made by three cheeky chicks. There are plenty of holiday sales that will allow you to buy any smell that fits your attitude. That's three cheeky chicks at MagicallyScented.com. Hey, it's AJ for the D Plus Club, where we cover all things Disney Plus. Each week I'll bring you the latest news and rumours, as well as what's new and what's coming soon to the Disney streaming service in the US and in the UK. And each week we have a weekly movie club. However, as I'm away for a weekend, this next movie will run for two weeks. So between August 16th and August 29th, we'll be returning to our MCU series for Iron Man 3. Share your thoughts in the Weekly Movie Club room in the Sorcerer Radio Discord at srsounds.com forward slash discord. And I'll feature some of your comments in the next podcast. You can find the D Plus Club on all major podcasting platforms with new episodes released on Sundays. See you soon. This is memory. We're telling them to you, this his memories. We're telling him, tell him, tell him to you. Chris, I gotta hear Chris's memory. Mine's pretty violent. <laughs> what?
<laughs> why? How I yeah, I don't know because I was I was trick or treating one year. What? And uh, a, a man dressed as Duffy <laughs> came and just assaulted me. And this I think it might have been I think it might have been because it wasn't Halloween. I don't believe this was in the middle. This was story. in the middle of this was in the middle of May. Uh, so I think people were getting the wrong idea, knocking on people's doors, asking them for th- things for th- things for free. Is it true story? No. no. Oh my gosh! I have no memory of Duffy. Yeah. I learned about Duffy about uh, when did we start recording? Twenty five like, minutes uh, ago. Okay. <laughs> Alex, what's your memory of Duffy? So I went to Epcot once, and I was walking around, and there was a meet and greet for Duffy and Shelly May, and I was like, "What is this?" Shelly May also? Yeah, Shelly wow. May was there too. What an and honor! I was like, "What is this? What is that?" And Christine's like, "I don't know. It's like a bear, I guess." And I was like, "But why?" And Good she was guess. like, "I don't know." And that was it. We went on along our day. Little Dude, did we know, we were standing by a, a, a royalty celebrity. Gosh, can you text me that story? That was a really good one. I want to tell some of my friends that. Oh, yeah. Um, I'll do a voice memo to you. Thank you. Perfect. I pretty much have the same memory walking around Epcot. <laughs> it was food, food and wine. I could have been there with Alex, actually. And I saw Duffy. I don't think I was there with you because I've always known who Duffy was. Like, I know who Duffy is, you know, mm-hmm. so I probably would be like, hey, no, it's Duffy. And it's big over in Asia or mm-hmm. whatever. Uh, so, but I just remember seeing him. I wish I would have got a picture with him, though. Because I like taking pictures with like rare, rare characters, rare characters. Uh, so I would, I wish I would have taken a picture with him. Joe has a scrapbook. He has like, um, posts post all pictures with all his rare characters. I kind of do. It's not a scrapbook, but we have it in the back wall. We have like pictures of us with characters. That is pretty cool. Yeah, I do a picture with. Um, it was actually one of the worst decisions I've ever made in my life. Uh, when me and Emily went a few years back, we, I went first of all. I met BB-8, exhilarating. I'm pretty sure yeah. it was the real BB-8 too, because his, his his boops were the same exact ones as the movie. Okay, yeah, but could have been the the bad the really bad decision we made was meeting Star Lord and and Baby Groot. Baby Groot was cool because he was like a little just he was chilling. He didn't really say anything to me. But Star Lord, man, that when you meet somebody without any like a costume on and they can actually talk to you, <laughs> very very creepy. It's just awkward, right? Oh, so awkward because he's like, talking to me like he's Star Lord. Right. I, I whispering like, man, I know you're not really Star Lord. <laughs> like, you don't. You don't even look remotely. You're like not Chris a real Pratt. Ravager. <laughs> when you die, funny. they will not. Blast the colors, whatever. <laughs> this was also not in Disney World. Hey, you know, we're talking about these characters. We should have, uh, we should post a picture of Chris dressed as Mickey Mouse. <laughs> oh, you should. <laughs> you should. People don't know this. I don't think your listeners know, but I did have a uh, stint for about maybe a year or two uh, where I would walk around a mart, which is <laughs> a, um, a mart is what we up here call like a ghetto mall as Mickey and Minnie. And my friend was uh, at least a foot taller than me and always insisted that he was Minnie. So the size difference was, was pretty good, pretty good. Yeah. You, and he uh, actually messaged us his pictures of him just as Mickey. And you, you, it's like one of those Mickey's that you see, it's not like Mickey, like from Disney. It looks like a Mickey. That's like, you can it, you like find a basement. Party Mickey. Yeah. Like a backyard yeah. party. Mickey. You, you yeah. find a basement yeah. and you end up being a, a spell cast on you when you put it on. <laughs> <laughs> this this mickey was like um uh, was like 49 dollars on aliexpress did you get it from wish it was a similar website yes <laughs> and it, t- it took six months to ship check us out on weeby geeks a new podcast website where you can find all your favorite geeky content just head over to weebygeeksbc.com that's weebygeeksbc.com and listen to all the other awesome podcasts, as well as Diz Is. Do you need to go on a trip? Do you hate the hassle of organizing a vacation? Well, say Hakuna Matata and call Matthew over at Travel by Chewy. He is an expert who can arrange itineraries from a relaxing Hawaiian getaway to an exciting theme park adventure. The best part is his services are free. Call him at 507-261-9773. That was 507-261-9773. And just let him know Diz has sent you. Check us out streaming on award-winning Disney streaming site Sorcerer Radio on Fridays at 1 p.m. Eastern Time or catch us again at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Sorcerer Radio is an amazing 24-7 Disney radio. Just visit srsounds.com or download the Sorcerer Radio app.
what did you do in the world of Disney slash news? Chris, what'd you do? Um, I actually watched the new show, What If, and Me I too. didn't watch uh, this week's yet, but I really enjoyed it. Uh, I, I, a sucker for animation shows ever since watching the Clone Wars, which I did not finish yet because you guys know I have commitment issues with TV shows. Yeah. But, um, but I, have commitment, the, I have commitment issues with video games. Yeah, yeah, you do. You do. This is true. <laughs> but yeah, so I did watch What If. I really liked it. I'm really excited for the uh, Black Panther one because it's the last time we'll ever hear Chadwick Boseman as Black Panther. That's true. That's true. Oh, wow. I, I yeah. did watch that one before we came out here. Oh, we'll have to talk about it later. Oh, I also um, started reading comic books again, by the way, which is Disney now because it's Marvel. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, but I I watched What If, and you know what? After the second episode, I mean, the first episode, I was like, okay, it's okay, it's not amazing. I wouldn't say it's amazing. Mm-hmm. It kind of. Sh- I told Chris the other day the same thing. I said it kind of shows you how Captain America: First Soldier, mm-hmm. how easy it is, how bad of a movie it is. Not bad of a movie, but like overall like movie, simple. it's so simple because you can fit it within forty minutes, <laughs> yeah. right? So the first episode is a whole movie in forty minutes, almost, which is crazy. And they didn't. They almost didn't miss anything. I would say in that episode, I thought. No. I thought the episode was like an hour and a half long. And then the second, and I, it was okay. I thought I was the second one was it. okay. You're saying or the first one? The first one was okay, and I was hoping okay. the second one would be better. And it's not much better. So, okay. Well, I'll, 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 uh, I'll give it a watch anyway. But, oh yeah, uh, watch it because it's entertaining. But it's definitely. I, I don't love it. I thought I was gonna love it. I don't love it. Hopefully, the next one is better. You know what's cool is uh, I downloaded the Marvel Unlimited comic. Uh, app and it's a monthly subscription you can pay ten dollars a month and read all the comics you want and there's since what if is so popular right now they have a what if um section and what if was a comic book series back in like the yeah i think it was 1977 and mm-hmm. there's some really cool storylines that i can't wait to dig into so yeah that's kind of cool they're bringing it to life with this tv show if, do you know if there's any hulk ones coming up there there uh oh what if the tv series yeah no i'm not sure i don't think so but that would be a cool one there's a cool yeah. comic about hulk it was what if he won world war hulk and uh which means that like, he would beat all the avengers that'd be cool if they brought that i'm sure there'll be more than one season though because there's like some kind of theory out there because you know when thor went to that one planet where he fought hulk in yes arena? well there's like a theory saying that was in the um like the quantum realm Oh, really? Yeah, because you can kind of see that area in Ant-Man and the Wasp or something, or maybe huh. when they were traveling in the Avengers. And, like, you remember how – so Hulk, I mean, there was a lot of – there must have been a lot of time for the for Bruce Banner to actually stay the Hulk. Yes. You know? Right. And so they're saying that because time works differently on that planet that uh, he was there for, like, thousands of years or something like that. Huh. There was yeah, a, there's a whole other theory. I mean, there's a whole comic uh, arc where he goes to outer space. I think it's called uh, – planet hulk Pla- planet and, hulk yeah, yeah. it's on netflix too i think there was like a TV yeah yeah there, there yeah. yeah there is yep and that was really good um so how about anything else chris did you, did you do no not really um do you want to talk about the genie yes let's oh wait what did you do in the world of disney joe anything oh cool? uh, i watched bad batch the, the finale of bad batch i, I really didn't good. watch that yet was the series good oh yeah i love it, it was really good. Good. i need to watch that. it yeah i yeah, keep was forgetting really about it they kind of talk they fill some gaps with some holes of how things were done I uh, I think that they I'm not 100 percent sure but I think they kind of went into how um, Palpatine was cloned. Oh really? Yeah. What I about think so. is that is is he a, a distant relative to Palpatine? This Palpatine you're talking about? Pa- Palpatine and Palpatine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, also, what else did I do? That's pretty much it. Uh, you know, we got some new Patreons, uh, so we're me donating that money to, for the new Patreon. Sweet for uh to give kids the world so that money's me going towards give kids the world so if you want to go ahead and join our patreon and also donate money to give kids the world go ahead and join us for the month of august and september uh you know thank you again to our patrons for keeping the show going we got you know jared in our chat right now emily and steve and chris your patreon too i am uh, so thank you guys uh and that's pretty much it how about you alex i mean i just watched what if both episodes other than that i have not done too much in the world of disney you guys want to talk about the genie now? Yeah, yeah. explain it to okay. me because I didn't look in. I didn't look that information up. I wasn't lying. I'm not. I didn't look it up. So explain to me what is genie and how, plus and how it works and stuff. Go ahead, Chris. You want to explain it, Chris? Yeah, sure. Uh, and fill the gaps. What I don't remember okay. to say. So they're getting rid of Fast Pass, uh, yeah. which I think started in 1999, if I'm not uh, mistaken. So it's been around for a very long time. They're getting rid of Fast Pass, and they're switching to this thing called Genie and Genie Plus. So everybody gets Genie for free, and it's basically like. It's almost like a, a, a Siri type thing where um, it, it 
learns your habits and your interests and it can kind of cater your day to what you're going to like the most. So you fill out a survey of, you know, what you're interested in and stuff like that. And it'll say like at this time, you know, do this. Yeah. I thought that was really neat. And it tells you what times the rides are at peak times. And Mm -hmm. so you can hit these rides, even if you don't want to pay extra for this genie plus what I'll get into. So this free genie app, which is built into the, my Disney experience app, you can go and uh, kind of just plan your, your visit. So hold on plus. So if the app is telling everyone don't ride at three, right at five then five would become the new peak time right well the thing is that everyone's interests are going to be different right so not everybody on that app is going to want to ride seven dwarves mind train so it's everyone wants to ride seven dwarves mind yeah all right that was a bad example okay but (laughs) but you know kind of like what what you're saying though it's gonna so when it starts bringing people five o'clock go here it's gonna eventually stop when it's gonna sure. start, stop telling people to go there at five i and guess start being, okay go there at two o'clock. five ten so it's gonna go and start directing people at different times through, through the day it might say okay this group of people might say you're in the parks you guys go to mine train at 12 o'clock you guys go to mine train at three o'clock so it's just not the lines are not overwhelmed you right. know what you know what they should par- partner with tesla and have little mini automatic vehicles that take you everywhere so then there's no walking and there's no like incidents with uh, traffic or anything like that. It's a Chris, great idea. On, yeah. Keep on going. Like Chris. What, 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 so, so we <laughs> got the genie. Everyone gets the genie for free with their right. parking pass. Right? And I love, I love, I love this idea of the genie. What's the $15 one? So genie plus is going to be $20 at Disneyland per day, $15 per day at Disney world. So we had a little bit cheaper. Um, so genie plus is essentially fast pass. So you can pick, uh, one attraction at a time to get into the fast pass lane, which I think they're going to call the, um, I, I don't know what they're going to call it. Lightning lane. Maybe yeah, I they, forget. They really? They're not going to call lightning. like, uh, the magic carpet line. They should have. They kind of missed an opportunity there. Maybe it's just called the Duffy line since he's so popular these days. <laughs> so they're, um, they're going for $15 a day. You can choose one attraction at a time which seems like because with the old fast pass system you can only choose three attractions per day right and then after those three you can go to your fourth or whatever but this one is like one at a time so you could pick one from 11 to one you know 11 mm. to 12 and when that's done you do a new one you do a new one you do a new one so i kind of like that idea and then if you want more then you can um then you can go ahead and purchase these individual attraction fast passes like what we've been hearing over in in, in paris but you know what's cool about that is that um so for an annual pass holder i don't think they'd be utilizing the uh the single attraction purchase as much but like for someone like me that goes to disney once every couple of years like say i really want to go seven doors yeah. mine train because i've never been on seven doors mine train because the line is always too long really you don't pay for seven dollars Huh? You don't get in, you don't go in the back where the dwarves enter. I don't even know what to say to that. So, um, I, oh so what God. I'm trying to say is, I never really get to ride the, the ride from the from the roller coaster. I'm always looking at the roller coaster as it goes yeah. by when I'm working in the mines, and those are very long hours. Yeah. So sometimes I just want to relax and do and ride the ride. So it's always too long of a wait, so we never do it. If they said like, hey. You know, throw me, throw us seven dollars, and and we'll poof get you to the front of the line. I'd probably do it. So it's what seven dollars over the course of how many times do I go? Once every three years. So you know, it, it's not that bad. Yeah, yeah. I guess when you're saying like that, but then the fast pass is going to back up because all these people are paying extra money to have fast passes for all the rides that day. But not everybody's going to do it. I don't think. I mean, that's like uh, not everyone's going to. You, you think do a family, it, right? a family. You think a family of six is going to be like, yeah, guys, well, let's let's do six six passes to Seven Doors Mine Train. Well, you know what I mean? You're, you're right. Not, utilize not everyone Disney. would do it, but people who come here once in a lifetime, they're going to do it. And how many people sure. are at Disney doing it once in a lifetime? I'd say probably half, maybe. Yeah, but then you, I mean, look at the old fast pass system that allowed every single person to go up to the front of the line, click that ticket, and come back, and there was never issues for that. You know what I mean? So it's like it's going to work. I think it's going to be good. I like so, it. Oh, I think it's going to be good too. And I so, think people are definitely going to spend that money. That 15 bucks is a mm-hmm. nothing to go ahead and get. It's nothing. Some of the, yeah. Sure. So for a once is, in a lifetime. Yeah. This, right is, this is, so you're, okay. So now the new fast, annual fast pass, right? They have their release surprises for that yet? No. What are you talking not about? For, not for Disney oh, World. Annual pass holders or something? Yeah. Not for Disney World. Yeah. For Disneyland, yet. they did. Not for Disney World. And okay. they were good, right, Joe? They were pretty they're, reasonable. They're, they're, they're reasonable, I think, for sure. Yeah. No doubt about it. Yeah. So, so annual pass, let's say it goes up a little bit and now you're also paying. A daily fee to go on rides. I hope they add something to the annual passes so I don't have to go ahead and go on every time and be like, okay, 
$15 for fast passes. Charge me more, but I want to have the fast passes. I want to be able to go ahead and be go on my app and choose like three fast passes a day. Right. You know, I wish to, I, I don't care about paying more money. Go ahead and charge me more money. Right. But I don't want to have to go in there and do the whole thing where I have to go ahead. I just want it easy. I want yeah, it Disney easy. Hates, right? Disney hates Disney uh, hates doing things hard and they hate charging people extra for things. So I'm sure that your wishes will be granted. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the genie will take care of you. All you do is say, genie, send me up fast pass for you know Space Mountain. I love the genie though. I love, see, that's the thing about being an annual pass is I don't want to go on the same rides over and over again. I want to go on different rides. So if that genie on the app would be able to be like, you know, okay, he went on Mind Train, uh, he went on the People Mover, and he went on Thunder Mountain one time, and I go there next time, and the genie's able to be like, okay, well, he went on these rides, yeah, uh, you know, last time. This time we'll go ahead and get you on, you know, these rides. I was mm-hmm. just thinking that it'd be, it'd be cool to be like, you know, three months later, the, thing, the genie's like, hey, you know what? You haven't rode this ride in a while. <laughs> I that, know. It is, it is cool. Right? I, I love giving big businesses all my information because I love when they can just make decisions <laughs> for me. <laughs> in all seriousness, Wait, I have no I, problem I, with it. You know, Chris, and I agree with you too, right? Yeah, yeah, I, love I, it. I, I People always freak out about inf- business getting information, like you know, personal information. Mm-hmm. But I want to know. I want companies to know what I like to buy and what uh, yeah, I like, right? Yeah. The first so I thing I do, exactly. The first thing I do when I sign up with anything is I always send them my social security number. And I usually get responses like, we don't, we didn't even ask for this. I said, yeah, but you might need it in the future. <laughs> just keep it but, on file and let me know. You know what the best part about this genie thing is? I just read this thing the other day when it was Robin Williams' birthday. Robin Williams took a huge pay cut to do Aladdin, right? Yes. And in <laughs> a part of the agreement was for them to not use the genie as the main character of the movie because he's not. It's a, It's very much a movie about Aladdin, right? Mm-hmm. so they didn't do that they just they put genie over all, all over everything and look now that he's dead now they're really, now they're just putting out more genie stuff all over all over uh you know on everybody's phone essentially now which I think uh, is but, funny. Uh, but even though <laughs> the movie's not about genie it is about genie yeah. right? but robin but I, what, sure, it's not like sure. I said, who, who, who did the voice for aladdin I, for, I don't even know if top. Oh, it, it, it's the guy from Full House. Oh my gosh, it, it is the guy. From, but it we is, don't even know yeah. his name. We don't yeah. know his name. Middle East, right? the Middle you Eastern know, guy. You know, I, I. No, it's not. I know he's very, he's very not Middle Eastern. <laughs> but the point is that we know the genie. Yeah. We know Robin well, Williams. Yeah, yeah. You know? He's an iconic mm. character person. But I hope they use technology. I wonder if they can do this legally. But I hope they can use technology to use his voice. That's what That'd I be want. Cool. That's what I want from the app. I want his voice coming out of my phone. Yeah, that would be I would, me too. That's what I want because that's the only genie that we know is Robin Williams. Yeah, not Will I mean, Smith. We know, we, we know, Will, but he didn't play. The cool thing about the Will Smith genie is that he wasn't trying to act like Will. Smith. I mean, no. he wasn't trying no, to act yeah. like Robin Williams. Oh yeah, yeah right? he pulled that off they really were both well. Great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's gonna be so disappointing when we open our genie app and it's the Robin Williams genie, and then Will Smith starts yelling at us <laughs> to go to to go to Seven Doors My Train in five minutes. He's talking about Philadelphia, born and raised. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. So that's to his on Duffy and Friends. I'm Joe. I'm Alex. I'm Chris. Thanks for listening and have a magical week. Please follow us on all social media by searching Diz His 65 Share us and subscribe to our podcast to get the latest show when it is available. If you want to help us out, get tips, get your memories shared on the podcast, see pictures and videos of what we are up to at the parks, join our goof troop on Patreon.com and search for Diz His. Diz His.